Welcome, my name is Abby. I am the Curly Haired Keeper, and today we are gonna play a little game called Facts versus Fiction. subscription button and notification bell and let's get going. I am going to share a statement about a snake and I want you to either comment below or keep track of your own score whether you think I am sharing a fact or a fiction, a truth or a lie and keep track of that score and make sure you comment your final score in the comments below. All right, statement number one, snakes can indeed be docile. Picture this, you're out exploring nature, looking for your local flora, flora and fauna, and deer see you, they run away right away, squirrels climb up trees, birds fly into branches, and then you come across a log, peek underneath it, and see a snake. You go to pick this snake up after making for absolute certain that this snake is not venomous, and it allows you to interact with and hold it. Now, snakes and other reptiles are the few wild animals that will actually allow humans to interact with them in their wild habitats. If you do see one of these animals out in the wild, take a moment, stop, appreciate it, interact with it if you feel comfortable doing so. Even better, go to someone who's extremely experienced in herping out in nature and can show you the local flora and fauna and help you learn how to interact responsibly with animals in their wild homes. Check out a local herpetological society. Those groups are wonderful to get involved with. I actually need to figure out my local herpetical, 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 herpetological society because it recently moved. So yeah, do as I say, not as I do. Now, when it comes to our captive bred slithery friend, which all of the snakes that I keep in my home have been captive bred for multiple generations, it seems to be that they are becoming even more docile. I think it helps that these captive born animals interact with humans right out of the egg or as soon as they're born. And I think that makes a big difference because they learn right off the bat that humans aren't dangerous and more willingly interact with us. Many of my own snakes have gotten to the point where they will actually seek out interaction with me as their caretaker, and I happily give it to them. Statement number two, snakes are mindless killers. This one was hopefully an obvious lie. It was a fictional statement. Snakes actually have very smart thinking brains. When we take the time to learn what to look for in snake behavior, we can actually learn what they're asking for, what they're seeking, and learn how to interact with them responsibly. When we learn what to look for in snake behavior, you can actually start to notice them stopping and processing the information around them. Things like tongue flicking, muscle tension, and how a snake are moving are all ways in which these animals communicate how they are feeling about a certain situation. From food mode distressed, from sleeping to restless, from curious or suspicious to completely relaxed, these behavioral cues are essential as we deepen our understanding of these animals. Do you wanna see a video of various snake behaviors? If you do, hit that like button, leave me a comment below, let me know. Further growing our understanding of these animals is essential, whether you're coming from a place of fearing snakes or have been keeping them for years and years. We shouldn't let our fears or our egos keep us from being curious about these animals. All right, statement number three, snakes don't bite. Okay, this one is an obvious lie. And while none of my own snakes have ever actually bit me, there have been several occasions where they have struck at me and I definitely would have gotten a bite had I not been paying attention. 
Now, while snakes can be incredibly docile and so much fun to interact with, they do have teeth in a jaw, which means they can and will bite. This is where learning those behavioral cues is really important to having a positive interaction with these animals and for just avoiding getting bit in the first place. Now, every one of these bites that I did get were in response to either something that I was doing wrong or the snake's current living situation. If I go into an enclosure or open an enclosure not paying attention to that animal's body language and it is in food mode, I will more than likely receive a food motivated bite. Snakes are opportunistic feeders, so if they think that there is a chance for food, they are the kind of animal that bites first and asks later. Many snakes are also prey, often hunted by birds and other animals in the wild. If I act like a predator towards my snake, they will instinctively respond by striking. It's kind of like when we jump when someone scares us, even if there's not really a threat present. If a snake is in an environment where I have no choice but to enter from above like a bird or don't have the space to turn off any sort of food mode or show them that I am not a threat, they really have every reason to take a strike at me. Bites can mostly be avoided if we take the time to observe the snake's behavior and respond to it accordingly. Make sure the food mode is turned off with the use of a hook, keep them in a front opening enclosure versus a top opening and take the time to learn their behavioral cues. Can bites still happen? Of course, we as humans are fallible creatures and we make mistakes, we're not perfect every single time. If a snake does strike or bite at you, take that as a learning opportunity and change your approach to them the next time around. On to statement number four, snakes can make amazing pets. Snakes can make amazing pets if you are prepared for them. It's important to be honest with yourself when asking essential questions like, am I comfortable handling my animal if it bites me? Am I comfortable feeding whole prey items to my snake? Do I have the room and ability to keep the animal in a way that makes both myself and the animal comfortable? Do your research, ask all of the questions, and make sure that you're ready for the adult version of the animal that you're seeking to purchase. That means being comfortable handling that animal when it's full grown, when you want or need to, being able to afford that animal, proper housing, and availability of food items. For example, this tiny baby girl has the potential to get up to 11 feet long, and that's a big snake. You need to make sure you're ready for the full grown version of the adorable noodle. If all of those boxes are ticked and you're ready to take the plunge into keeping snakes, welcome, this community is amazing. Snakes are beautiful animals. Many will willingly interact with their keepers and each has their own unique personality that they will share with you if you take the time to learn it. And that's it, how'd you do? Share your score down below. Don't forget to hit that subscription button and notification bell. Also, huge thanks to all of the Patreon followers. Your support is so appreciated. I'm Abby, the Curly Hair Keeper, and I will catch you next time. <sighs> to be clear, I have been bitten by...